I've been using foldable device ever since the first Galaxy Z Flip came out back in 2019. And anyone who knows me or who's seen me in real life knows that I walk around carrying a foldable phone as my main device. And usually it is something like this, a uh, flip type of phone as opposed to a fold phone. And that is simply because of the size. And for the longest time, the fold form factor, including the latest Galaxy Z Fold 6, despite how thin it may be, is still the size of two phones sandwiched together. However, that quickly changed with the arrival of the Honor Magic V series and with the Magic V3, it is so much thinner compared to before. I mean, just look at the size or the thickness of these two side by side. And this is just one of those things that you really just have to experience before you pass any judgment. Now, I'm gonna give you three really good reasons why the Honor Magic V3 just might be the best foldable device of 2024. And in a way, these are also the same reasons why Samsung should really start paying attention and should really start innovating in order to remain competitive in the foldable space. Let's go. The first and very obvious reason is the form factor. And if you paid attention, if you've seen our past video or the live stream that we conducted on the Honor Magic V2, Honor was able to accomplish this level of thinness by using a battery technology called silicon carbon. As opposed to the traditional lithium ion batteries that you find in most phones right now, silicon carbon battery is so much more dense and more compact and that allows manufacturers to drastically reduce the size of their phones. Now, reducing the overall footprint is just one piece of the puzzle. You also have to have really good flexible display technology. You also have to have really good hinge and also really good cooling. Now, Honor has figured all of that out. And that is part of the reason why we are even more impressed with how far the Magic V3 has come compared to when it first came out. Not only is it thinner compared to the Magic V2, the hinge is also more stable. And in addition to this, it seems that they were able to figure out how to seal or how to make it weatherproof. And now we have a phone that's actually IPX8 water resistant, which means you can actually take this phone for a dip. And that has always, always been a major concern for foldable phones. Since we have two pieces that are essentially being held together by a hinge, it is still possible for water or moisture to go in and thus is a real problem among foldable devices and hopefully Honor actually figures out a way to improve its dust resistance in the next generation. Based on the phones that Honor has been coming out lately, they seem to be one of those companies that are really working on making their phones more durable. So I have no doubt that they can do it. Now, this might not seem logical, but there is just this feeling that the phone is too thin every time I try to unfold it. But in the world of phones with foldable displays, I don't think that there's such a thing as being too thin because the next step would be coming up with a trifold phone. And we've seen Huawei do it. They already have one. So we have no doubt that Honor will be having one in the future as well. Now, the other reason why size or thickness matters is because having a thinner phone allows you to make your phone wider. Now, comparing the width of the Honor Magic V3 against the Galaxy Z Fold 6, you can see that this actually looks like your regular sized phone, except it has that foldable display in the middle. By now, most of us have gotten used to your 6.7 inch phablet form factor. And I feel like at the end of the day, all we want is to take that same phone, but a flexible display in the middle, and that would be your next generation foldable device. Reason number two, cameras. As someone who just loves to take photos, I wanna be able to capture precious and unique moments using the best possible camera that I can have access to. And if you're gonna be walking around carrying a phone with a camera anyway, wouldn't it make a lot of sense to have the best possible cameras on those phones as well? And up until now, the cameras on foldable phones have been the smaller ones and it is not as competitive as other flagships. But now the Magic V3 has a really good camera system. You have a 50 megapixel Sony IMX 900 series main sensor and a periscope lens that goes all the way up to 3.5X. 
So when I look at the photos that we're able to capture using this phone, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. It actually reminded me of the Honor 200 series. It even has that hardcore photo mode, which produces some really good looking portrait photos. We're also finally getting 4K 60 FPS video recording, which I know is going to make a lot of you content creators out there happy. And then when it comes to the selfie cameras, Honor did a very smart thing by not having to work on that under display camera compared to Samsung. The photos that we've taken using those under display cameras have always been underwhelming. And with the Magic V3, you just get your standard hole punch notch with your selfie camera and it, it actually works. Now, granted, there are times when you will notice that hole when you're using the inner display, but for the most part, it just fades into the background. It just you just forget that it's actually there. One other thing that we couldn't help but notice is the processing. Uh, Honor Magic V3 seems to rely on post processing to lift the images and make them look more appealing. This simply means that there are times when detail is lost in favor of sharpness. There were photos that exhibit artifacts such as halo or you know the hdr effect where there's an unnatural looking glow behind certain objects the colors on photos also look oversaturated at least to my eye but why don't you guys look at these samples let us know what you think about them and let's discuss in the comment section Now, the third reason why the Honor Magic V3 just might be the best is a very simple reason, and that is the price. Uh, Honor Magic V3 is going to retail for 89,999 pesos in the Philippines, and in Europe, I believe it debuted at around 2,000 euros. So it's definitely cheaper compared to the Galaxy Z Fold 6, which has dominated the market for a while, and they're able to charge a high price and a high premium. And they deserve it because they did all the R&D, they took all the risk. But now with the Honor Magic V3, we have a new competitor. It's more affordable. And if you're not really into the Galaxy ecosystem, if you're not into Dex or Nox or Bixby, if you're not planning to use Galaxy AI that much, or if you prefer to use third-party software, then going with a cheaper alternative that provides more value in terms of portability and cameras simply makes sense. Now, so far, we've talked about the obvious stuff like the form factor, the cameras, the price, but there are also other things that you may want to consider. First and foremost, the crease on the display. It seems to me, subjectively, that the crease on the V3 is less noticeable compared to the Fold 6, which appears to be deeper and thus much more noticeable. Performance so far on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has been nothing short of amazing. It is the best chipset that you can get your hands on right now. It also has thermals under control, which means you will be able to use this for extended periods of time with your GPU firing at max if you're going to be gaming on this device or if you're going to be emulating. And by the way, if you're going to be emulating, this is the perfect display size or display aspect ratio for you to enjoy your classic console games. You also have your software features such as face-to-face -face translation. This is something that's new with the Magic V3. Compared to Galaxy AI though, the features just aren't that rich, but Samsung has had a head start and Honor is just focusing on hardware for now. Hopefully they will have time to focus on the software side of things as well in the future. Then there's fast charging and wireless charging support, which is something that was missing back with the Magic V2, but now they fix it with the Magic V3. You get 66 watts wire charging, 50 watts wireless charging. I can't really think of anything major that would stop you from getting this over this. So Samsung, if you're listening, you really have to step up your game because if you're going to be releasing another fold with more Galaxy AI, then that's simply not going to cut it. We're just going to have to wait and see how the market responds. But if anything, 
this only shows that competition is really good for consumers. It drives innovation. So if you're in the market for a foldable device, make sure to check out the Honor Magic V3. It's best if you can actually interact with it and take a look at it firsthand in real life. Also check out the Galaxy Z Fold 6. It's still a very, very good phone. Watch other videos, other reviews, and for more content like this, head over to our YouTube channel, search for TechKuya, subscribe to us, and we'll see you guys there. Paalam!